Hello, I'm John, the Banking Systems Engineer Terminal. And with the banking systems breaking down all around the world, we're going to talk about how Argentina survived in the 1980s when their banking system crashed. This is an article from the Toronto Star, September 7th, 1982, when I was arrested by the Toronto Police picketing the IMF World Bank meeting in Toronto. I remember now that there are hundreds of thousands of key people out there protesting, but I remember the day when I was all alone. So, immorality of interest led man to police station. <clears throat> Ottawa man is held by Desmond Bill, Toronto Star. Metro police hauled away a man who stood outside the Sheraton Centre yesterday protesting against bankers. John Termel, 31, founder of the 75-member Christian Credit Party of Canada, was taken to the police station and allowed to go free a couple of hours later. <clears throat> he was warned that he would be arrested for breach of the peace if he went back to the site of the International Monetary Fund slash World Bank meetings and displayed his sign again. Supreme Court case. Termel, who's trying to start a Canada-wide Ottawa-based protest against evictions, claims that charging interest is not only immoral, but is illegal under Canadian laws. Termel, who says he wants to use the system to screw the system, has already taken his case all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada, where the judges brushed off his claims. But that doesn't deter him. It cost me $15 to go all the way to the Supreme Court, he explained. If every single person being evicted took their case all the way to the highest court in the land, we could clog up the whole system. You'd probably die of old age before the banks could foreclose on you. Termel said his method is now being used by William Devisary, a 52-year-old man, after a bank foreclosed on his home mortgage and obtained a court order to evict him. This was the article when I managed to have the bailiffs who were actually in the house leave. And of course the article says the homeowner fights off the bailiff and it was one piece of paper that did that. Termel is a follower of what he calls the pure social credit theories of Major C.H. Douglas, the economic theoretician behind the social credit movement that swept Alberta in the mid-1930s and led to the first social credit government in the world. It held power in Alberta for more than 30 years. Termel once tried to charge Gerald Bowie, Governor of the Bank of Canada, with keeping a common gaming house, arguing that the bank is gambling, customers will be able to repay their loans. To buttress his case, he cited the meaning of French words from which we derive the word mortgage. Mort is the French word for death, and gage is a form of the French verb to wager. He said mortgage is aptly named a death gamble for its requirement that the participants repay both the principal and the usury when the banks only created the loan out of the principal. He now offers free kits telling others how to stiff the banks. I was passing out this flyer from my Christian credit programs. So let's just read the most important one. One, the abolition of interest rates. Consider how governments presently finance their activities. If the city has expended the money allocated for snow removal and is hit with a major snowstorm, council calls an emergency session and authorizes the issuance of a million dollars in municipal bonds. The mayor has them printed up and exchanges the million in bonds with a banker for a million in bills, bearing 20% interest, which happened to weigh 100 pounds in all. So council pays for the million dollar job of snow removal with the hundred pounds of money. The merchants and their employees accept the hundred pounds, a million bucks, of bills in exchange for their goods and services. But at the end of the year, because the banker demands the repayment of a hundred pounds, a million, in principle, and twenty pounds, two hundred thousand, in interest at twenty percent, Council must demand 120 pounds, 1.2 million, of bills in taxes from the citizens who only received the original 100 pounds, the million. Because every level of government uses this super stupid way of financing services, the taxpayers find themselves in the impossible situation of having to repay a greater amount of money than is issued into circulation. Interest is the root of the evil. 
The solution is to be found in the Bible. Quote, let the exacting of interest stop. Unquote, Nehemiah 5.10. Accepting that credit is only Christian when the exacting of interest has ceased, the major goal of the Christian credit party is a total abolition of interest on credit. This will be accomplished with the use of small denomination interest-free bonds in lieu of small denomination interest-bearing bills. If Abraham Lincoln could get it implemented a hundred years ago, we will certainly get it implemented due to our powerful computer technology. When elected, a Christian credit council would also authorize the printing of a million dollar bond to get the snow cleared, except that the mayor would bypass the banker by printing up a million in dollar bonds, bearing no interest, which happened to weigh 100 pounds. The council will pay the million dollar job of snow removal with 100 pounds of small denomination interest-free bonds instead of 100 pounds of small denomination interest-bearing bills. Because the bonds retain the value of the original services performed, inflation will cease to exist. The merchants and their employees can accept the 100 pounds in bonds from the civil servants in exchange for the same goods and services that they would have delivered for the 100 pounds in bills when they realize that at the end of the year, because the banker middleman has been cut out, council will only have to demand 100 pounds, 1 million of bonds in taxes to pay for the principal, saving them the 20 pounds, 200 grand in taxes to pay for the interest for the removal of that snow. Having demonstrated that small denomination interest-free bonds cleared the snow as well as small denomination interest-bearing bills, council will print up enough bonds to hire all the able-bodied people on welfare and unemployment to build themselves some affordable houses that can be bought interest-free because they were financed with our new interest-free paper. With less people on welfare and unemployment, our taxes must be reduced. With more people paying their share, our taxes must again be reduced. Finally, this is the last article I'm going to read to you. It's called Cash Starved Argentine Provinces Turning Out Their Own Money in 1985. So by Andres Oppenheimer. Miami, two remote Argentine provinces short of cash to pay public employees have come up with an easy solution. They're printing their own money to the chagrin of national and international banking authorities. We are paying all our public employees with provincial bonds, Roberto Romero, governor of the northern Argentine province of Salta, said in a telephone interview. He said Salta started printing its own IOUs because it wasn't getting federal currency fast enough. People can change these bonds for money at any bank, Romero said. And of course, they don't have to if they can spend them in town. Only when they leave the country, I suppose, do they have to change them. They can use them to shop at supermarkets and to buy cars and other products. And who wouldn't take a government bond as a piece of money? The Argentine government is not smiling, and world bankers are worried that other cash-starved states will copy Salta's financial extravaganza and jeopardize Latin efforts to curb inflation. They think inflation is too much money, shift A, chasing the collateral. They don't know about shift B, same money chasing left collater less collateral. Oh, to curb inflation and pay huge foreign debts. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, and the world's main financial inspector for debt-ridden countries was concerned enough to bring up the issue in recent talks with the Argentine government, said sources in Argentina and Washington. The IMF does not comment on negotiations with individual countries. After SALTA started quietly issuing its IOUs in September last year, 1984, the nearby province of La Noya started printing its own bonds too. Four other Argentine provinces have either begun adopting similar programs or are preparing to do so. In all cases, the bonds are good only within the province where they're issued. And that's too bad because they're good. I'm sure people in those provinces next door were taking them too if they were ever coming to shop over there. Wake up. You can't stop people just because you say it's only good here. But the government uh, of President Raul Alfonso said the provincial bonds are expanding the country's money supply oh, and undermining efforts to remove Argentina from the list of the world's worst uh, of, the, of the world inflation leaders. Earlier this year, Argentina had a thousand percent annual inflation rate. Think about that. A thousand percent earlier that year. 
Alphonse made headlines worldwide in June when he launched an austerity program built around a commitment to stop his government from printing money. Since then, inflation has dropped to 3% a month, a record low in recent history. That's only 36% a year from 1,000%. So these bankers are all worried about the injection of new money causing more inflation, and actually this injection of new money caused less inflation. Shift B inflation. Of course, they give credit to the austerity program, but where have you seen an austerity program work before? So that's just the cover. What really caused the inflation to go down was increase in money supply, which meant less people went broke, less got foreclosed, and less collateral got seized, resulting in the same money chasing more collateral. Uh, the bonds printed in Salta come in denominations the same as ordinary Argentine exchange bills, currency bills. They pay no interest and can be exchanged for Argentine currency or used to pay goods. Romero, the opposition Peronist party, and officials of the other provinces claim their bonds are not really new currencies because they're no good outside their provinces. Well, we know they are good. <laughs>